It's a beaky time. Stick around to find out more. Hi everyone, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim PF, and uh, we're in the middle of Japanese season here on the channel. This is the fourth episode of five I'm going to do covering Japanese whiskies. So please check the channel out and go back and see the ones that um, I've done before. And uh, come back next week for the Yamazaki 18. Um, so far I've done a uh, Nika and now we're the third episode out of four into the Beam Suntory collection. And this week we're going to be checking out the Hibiki Japanese Harmony. Now if you remember a couple of weeks ago we covered the Hibiki 12 year and uh, that is now out of stock worldwide. You, know, you can get it on auction websites, things like that, and this is what they replaced it with. It's not a replacement for it, but it's the, the bottling that you will see more regularly. It's very available in airports. You can get it in specialists, things like that. I've seen this for 50 quid. I've seen it for more than 50 quid. Uh, the 12 year started out around that sort of price and has now soared up into the upper 70s, getting on for 100 pound for a 75 sill. This is a 70 sill. Some see it in half litres, depending on where you are, that sort of thing. It's all a bit weird. Um, it's kind of the common theme with Japanese whiskies. They're probably slightly overpriced, especially in the UK. Definitely so in America. They, they go through the roof because of availability. And the allocations are poor. And they're kind of releasing these things to keep them going and keep them in people's minds, I guess, while they're putting more barrels down. Hopefully they're doing that, because if they're not, they're crazy. Although they are masters at producing this supply-demand thing that's going on with Japanese whiskey right now. But anyway, enough about the, uh, the politics of whiskey. Let's move on to the dram itself. As I said, Japanese Harmony. The Hibiki range is their kind of, their premium blended range. And uh, it's the mixture of their various malts, including the Hakushu, the Yamazaki, and the grains they do from Cheetah. Uh, this has more than the Habiki 12, which only had single malt, single malt, and the grain from each of those. Uh, this one has a variety of barrels, casks, whatever, as well. It has the American oak, has the Japanese oak. I'm not gonna try and pronounce that word, but there it is and uh, has some like sherry cask and things like that mixed in. I think there's like 10 different spirits that go in to make this thing. And um, you know, as you can see, it's a really nice bottle. It's like a little mini decanter. It's got a little, oh, let's do pop next to the mic. Oh, not so good. But it's got a, you know, it's got a cool. This is gonna be something that you keep. You know, you might take the label off if you want, but you're gonna probably use this as a mini decanter. This is better quality than the decanters I've got downstairs. So let's look at the dram itself. 43%, I've said before, I, I like 43%. When distilleries drop it down to 40%, it reeks of profit margins and business. And when people, when distillers wanna put kind of really nice touches on the whiskey, they should add you know, it's 43% instead of, 40% you're getting more actual spirit for your money instead of water. Can't go wrong. It goes, it's got a, it's got a pretty nice color to it. Let's have a sniff and see what we get. Oh, okay, so there's, there's lots of oak in there. On the top, lighter flavours. Lots of oak. You can definitely smell that sherry influence. Mm, very sweet on the nose. It's a little bit harsher than the 12 year, but that's to be expected. You know, the 12 year is going to be 12 year spirits. This you're only guaranteed to be getting things that are over three years old, that's it. Right, let's try. Mm. Much more of that kind of oaky sweetness, bit of caramel. The finish is kind of short. I just noticed literally just then it just went gone, disappeared. It's got a zingy taste to it as well. I don't like to use the word alcohol burn, but you know, that kind of, that's the thing that people describe it as, that mouth feel. It's hot. 
It does taste a bit younger than that old 12 year. But it's their premium brand and you kind of expect it to be good. It's a lot of money. I have seen it online going for like 55, 60 quid now. It's starting to creep up a little bit, which is a bit disappointing. I think this was well priced at 50 pounds. I would buy it again at 50 pounds. It's, um, it's well balanced for what it, what's in it. The grain makes it hot, I think, which is interesting. There's a slight sherry influence in there that's nice. But it isn't overly complex either. It's, it's a bit of a weird one because it's like um, that kind of, when you're drinking peated whiskies, you have to work through that peat to get the subtle flavours underneath. This is kind of the same, you have to work through that initial hotness to get the subtle flavours underneath. That's not something I typically expect for things that are 50 quid plus. I expect something a bit smoother, a bit more character to it. But it's not a bad dram by any means, definitely not. I think I would prefer it to be 50 quid at a litre in the airports. But I'll take it, I'd buy it again, definitely. I got given this by a friend and um, very grateful for it. And like I say, I would spend 50 quid on it again. If it starts creeping up anymore, 60 quid, a bit silly, any more than that. Crazy talk, absolute crazy talk. It's definitely not that sort of money. Not when you can get some incredible whiskey for 75 pound plus. If you start paying this sort of money for that, then mental. But pick it up in an airport for 50 quid. Hmm. I am um, at the top of the show, I completely forgot to do comment of the week. So now that we're at the end of the show, let's do that. Um, unfortunately, I uh, was away this week, so I've filmed this one and the one before back to back. So I'm gonna have to do a comment from the Habiki 12 video, in fact, going uh, right back then. And that was from Carl Cycling Videos. Uh, and he said, I can't believe I didn't get comment of the week. Well, there you go, buddy. You've now got comment of the week. Hope that's excited you. Um, he's also a fellow YouTuber, so please do check out his channel. He does um, lots of cycling cam videos of people overtaking him too closely, but uh, and he's all the subscribers he can get. There you go. Thanks for joining me for another No Nonsense Whiskey video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the things that are good, and I'll see you next week on another No Nonsense Whiskey video.